Hello, everybody, and welcome to our NCAP Swaya update. We are here giving you um, updates on our emerging artisans as well as our instructors who are part of the 2020 virtual market that's going to be hosted by Swaya. And today we have here with us, kind of um, via Zoom, one of our instructors for the Navajo Cultural Arts Program, the wonderfully talented uh, Jared So. He's our pottery instructor. I'm sure that you guys, if you have been following our NCAT page, have seen several of our postings, including one of the documentaries that he uh, has done as part of the NCAT crew, uh, Pottery Taking It to the Next Level, if you're interested in taking a look at that work, which gives a little bit more background on his personal um, outlook and his application of teaching pottery to students and to our younger generations. We'll be sure to include that link down below. Check that out, but not until after you listen to this interview with Jared. So Jared, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? So I'm Yad Eh. Belakana Nishlon Nakaitene to Heklini Bushes Chin. Belakana Hidashche Ado Loka Dene Dashanale. Um, currently live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I am pursuing a Master's in Fine Arts and Ceramics. Um, have had the great privilege to um, work with the Naval Cultural Arts Program with teaching, just like Christine um, mentioned. And um, so uh, my, my dad is Daryl So, um, and my grandparents were Faye and Emmett So. Um, the late Faye and Emmett So, and they, they were renowned potters and um, from Tuba City, Arizona, and I have been very blessed to be part of that family to be able to learn these skills and, and incorporate it into my life. So, um, so not only um, are you part of this renowned pottery family and the NCAP family, uh, you are well um, versed in terms of attending the Swaya markets. Am I not correct? Mm -hmm. So this will be the fourth year that I've participated. Um, I first started the year I graduated from my undergraduate degree. Um, it's always been um, a really exciting port time of the year with Swaya just because all the different artists from all over North America are coming together and just the network that creates um, as well as the conversation and the feedback for your work. Um, as an artist, it's always, um, I think one of the biggest hoops to get over first is um, having the confidence and in your work to show your work, um, to kind of put it out in the world and you'll to get feedback. Um, and it's kind of um, hard to, to kind of have that bravery and confidence to step forward, but it's always really nice when, when you have positive feedback and uh, um, it's accepted by a lot of people, so. Before we talk about a little bit about that positive feedback that you've gotten from the Swaya yeah. crowd, I want you yeah. to kind of let us know when you first got into Swaya, what was your reaction? So the first year, I remember being really nervous um, because um, I, I didn't have, I was going to graduate and didn't have much plans afterwards and was definitely procrastinating on applying for a job. So I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. And they send out application or at least that year, I don't know if it's consistent each year, they kind of sent out the, uh, the acceptance letters in waves. So I saw other people being accepted and getting their acceptance letter and it was feeling like forever for me to get a letter. So I was getting really nervous. Um, and so I was really excited, um, definitely got a rush because it, it felt like I, um, I mean, I, I had the passion in my work. I enjoyed doing pottery. An acceptance letter or a denial letter wasn't going to change my approach in terms of I'm always going to be wanting to play with clay and play in mud and make pots. And, and so it was really validating um, to be accepted into such a prestigious show, especially because of the high quality and high expectation of the work that goes into that show. Um, that alone, um, it was exciting because that's like I had had family show on that show before. So it was kind of a milestone or um, a bar to hit. And so it was very um, validating in the sense of, hey, I could, I could do this as a career. So 
And it hasn't been that bad of a career because not only were you accepted, uh, but you are a ribbon winner from SWAI. Am I not correct? Yeah, so I, I got a second place ribbon for that category um, that first year. And it was just, I, it, was, it was great. It's because I had so many family members that came out to support, um, so many people that came to my booth to come visit me and congr congratulate me. Um, it was um, a really a happy weekend, uh, to say the least. I had instructors come by, employers come by, friends, family, family, friends. Um, a lot of people come, come out to support, and it was a really, really good feeling. So this year, um, we have a whole new market, right? A literal new market with COVID-19. Um, yeah. We were worried, you know, we know that so many artisans really make a, a, a tremendous amount of economic profit that, that goes towards um, their abilities to sustain their families. And so we were wondering mm -hmm. what was going to happen with, with Swaya and now it's virtual. It's a virtual market. The, the group, the crew over there decided that, you know, we're going to push forward. We're going to turn this into a virtual market. Um, what were your initial thoughts on the virtual market? Um, I was definitely relieved when it came to having opportunities, especially with the the change in our economy and the types of opportunities because I heavily rely on Indian market to help pay for my tuition and anything I need for the for the school year. Um, so it's been kind of a an interesting process wrapping my head around it. Um, I've also known for me and a lot of other people since the U.S. has closed down and, and sent so many regulations with COVID-19 it seems like the world kind of went on pause in March, but time kept ticking. So when it comes to like these de the deadlines for SWIA or events with SWIA, it's kind of the times all blurred together, um, let alone, um, it's just been a different summer um, with creating work and having the creativity drive. There's been so many emotional um, and impacts whether it's with our relationships with our family or those that have been affected by COVID-19 those that have been affected by the Black Lives Matter movement and the protests that have been going on nationwide um, that's taken a toll on a lot of people and a lot of artists um, so it's been a, it's this will be a very interesting virtual Indian market to see what type of creativity comes out of that um, but um, there's been pros and cons because it's definitely changed my typical rhythm to making work. Um, being home more often, be able to take care of a garden, um, work from home, which I've been lucky to be able to do and still have employment, um, has definitely changed my perspective and slowed things down. And I think it's kind of, um, I've been making some different things that I normally don't make. So. Um, that's definitely been a plus to it all. So, uh, you know, talking about the the different types of pieces that you're producing, uh, what piece in that are you most proud of? So I've been making kind of a series of kettles, uh, teapots, um, and I made one um, that I fired uh, about a week and a half ago that came out really nice. I really liked it. Um, played with texture a little bit more and form, as well as thinking about using um, other materials of clay for, for the handles and other things. So it's a multimedia piece and that's um, the one I've been most proud of. It's my most recent Instagram post. So, so yeah. check out his Instagram page. Guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, what do you, you know, going into the virtual market, uh, I've been talking with other artisans uh, like Beverly Black Sheep and Zephyr Anderson, and they're trying to get these websites up. And Santa Fe Indian Market has been able to uh, work with our artisans one on one to get their their websites up. So, how has it been uh, getting that website put together? That is a great question. Um, I believe my it's the through the art span Swaya's thing. Um, the last part of the UL for me is just I, I believe it's just Jared So. It could be Jared So Pottery. I've been kind of late to set it up just because I 
I tried to rush for, there was a deadline to submit pottery for during on July 24th. Typically that deadline to submit pottery is until mid-August. And so that deadline snuck up on me and I ended up rushing some pots and um, they, some, some blew up because they weren't completely dry and that was devastating. So the getting photos as well as creating a, um, an online presence for Swaya has been difficult to the least, to say the least, just because I'm, I kind of slowed down to just listen to my pots a little bit more. Um, so initially I'll have some stuff uploaded August 1st, but I'll be uploading as the month goes on as I finish pieces. Um, so that's been the biggest challenge. Um, for any advice for other students and emerging students, don't underestimate your photography um, the, and the power of your photography. Um, photograph in a way where it tells a story um, of, of your work, um, especially with what you use as a background and your lighting. Um, since everything, your, your audience is gonna be seeing it through a computer screen or a phone screen, um, your photography can really make the difference. We're slowly starting to learn that <laughs> um, here yeah. at home as my husband's also getting ready for SWAI. It's amazing what uh, lighting does. And so, mm -hmm. um, well, as so you're an instructor here at Denai College, you've had the opportunity to work with, you know, a handful of our students during the summertime uh, to get them reinvigorated. We were speaking to them. Why is SWAI important as an emerging artist? As an emerging artist, um, you're expected to make a living. Um, and Swaya is a place where you can make connections and make a network and get exposure for your name um, to help build that type of career. Um, there are a lot of eyes on Swaya, where Santa Fe alone is the third um, city in the States for the largest art sales behind New York and LA. So that market there is there and it's waiting for you, as well as, um, it's a powerful platform to show your work as, as well as shares your message um, on the type of work that you do and the purpose and the story behind it. Um, especially since there's a large majority of the audience that is non-native. And so as a person from your community, um, you are representing your community. You're, say, you're sharing that message um, of your work um, and how you conduct yourself and ultimately what um, I mean, Native America in general, we don't get a lot of exposure and a lot of things, which has a lot of, ends up having a lot of consequences when it comes to um, how people see us and, and ultimately getting policies passed and making sure that our contemporary issues are visible. And so um, they, participating in this market that has a vis visibility of Native America, it's, it's important to participate it because um, you have more control of your voice. That's awesome, Jared. Well, I am so glad that you were able to sit down with us today. Mm -hmm. um, I want to wish you best and best of luck in the Jared Show, as well as um, throughout the market. So, so um, how can people get in touch with you? How can they follow you and your work? Um, best place is Instagram. Um, that's what the most active, most simplest, because it's a photo and 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 such. I believe I have a an email that's message or that's posted on the Artspan Swaya website that will be launching August first. Um, so it's either Instagram or email. My email is tso jared j a r e d at gmail dot com. That's the best best way to ask questions or um, any comments or anything like that. Awesome, Jared. Is there anything else that you want to say before we head out today? Um, I don't, maybe just to, to artists that are working, whether you're a part of SWAI or not, um, just continue to take care of yourself and take care of your family, whether that's through your artwork or through other means. So it's, a, it's definitely an, an, an unprecedented time with everything that's going on and um, everything that's happening to our nation. So the Navajo Nation.
more specifically. So. Best of luck. And if you guys are interested in any pottery, learning about anything um, that has to do in terms with uh, working with your hands and understanding how to listen to the earth and listen to clay, Jared's one of the people <laughs> to, to turn to. So have a great day and check out Jared's website at the artspan.com. Awesome, thank you.